Welcome back to Fair Play, my series of videos on the Factor Analysis of Information Risk, or FAIR methodology. I'm Stephen Cardinal. In my previous video, I took you through the loss event frequency side of the FAIR model as we try to forecast how often a particular loss event might occur. In this video, I'll walk through the right side of the model, loss magnitude, as we try to estimate how bad things could get. By determining how often and how bad a situation might be, we can better determine where to focus our limited resources. Let's go. Loss magnitude is the expected loss, typically in monetary terms, we would expect to incur each time the scenario under analysis occurs. This side of the model seems simpler in that there are no continuums to deal with, just dollars, or euros, or pounds. I think this side actually represents a greater challenge for many security people, however. Many security professionals, not all, are, aren't working closely enough with the business to understand revenue streams and many of the other processes that affect potential loss numbers. It's my opinion that to do this part of the model well, you have to get out and talk to the business leaders if you're to get accurate, defensible loss numbers. Now, loss magnitude is divided into primary and secondary losses, and the main difference is based on the stakeholder. In primary losses, we're focusing purely on the primary stakeholder, typically the organization you're doing the analysis for. If you're working for Wally's Widgets and analyzing a ransomware attack that takes down the Wally's Widgets website, Wally's Widgets is likely your primary stakeholder. The loss event has direct impact on the company. Secondary losses are triggered by the reactions of secondary stakeholders, such as regulators, customers, investors. Not every loss event will have secondary losses. Secondary losses, when they occur, however, can be many times the magnitude of primary losses, which should become clearer in a bit. Secondary losses are always triggered by a primary loss. All right, so how do we determine what losses go where? And how do we make sure we account for all losses? Well, FAIR provides us with six forms of loss. Productivity, response, replacement, fines and judgments, competitive advantage, and reputation. Some are typical of only primary losses, others of secondary, and a couple could be either or both, but that's a more advanced topic. Right, so working down the primary loss side, we start with productivity losses. This encompasses things like personnel sitting idle, drawing a paycheck as their systems are down. It also includes lost revenue because of the incident. Now, it's important to note that some revenue may be delayed and not lost. For instance, if I drive down to Blue Box Retailer to buy some socks and they're closed because of a power outage, will I just go back tomorrow to buy the socks, meaning there's no lost revenue, only delayed? Or will I continue down the road to Red Box Retailer and buy my socks there, resulting in a lost sale to the Blue Box? Now, these losses get totaled up under productivity. Next is response. When a loss event occurs, there are probably a whole bunch of people who spring into action. Incident responders, lawyers, PR and communications. All of these people draw a salary, I hope, and are unable to perform other duties when they're attending to the event. This is response cost. It may also include costs related to outside counsel, digital forensics, breach notifications, and things like that. Third under primary losses is replacement costs. If a hurricane blows down our building like the Big Bad Wolf, there's a cost to replace that building and everything in it. Right. Now let's turn our attention to secondary losses. You'll notice first that there's the concept of secondary loss event frequency. Every primary loss may not trigger a secondary loss. An internal ticket tracking system that goes down may have impact on how the business runs, but may have no effect on secondary stakeholders. As you discuss primary loss events with your business leaders, you'll want to ask about any of these secondary impacts and how likely they are to occur. You'll represent this as a percentage, such as 25% of the time we expect this event to impact secondary stakeholders. Once we've determined a secondary loss has some likelihood of occurring, we break it down across the other forms of loss. We start with fines, fines and judgments, where a loss event may either run us afoul of regulators, such as a breach of patient data, or other stakeholders, such as in a breach of contract situation. 
if we're hosting a SaaS application and promising five nines of uptime, a significant availability event may have us compensating our customers in some way. Next is competitive advantage. Is there something in the event that can diminish our competitive position? Was the source code of our product leaked? Did someone get their hands on the formula for Coke or Ch Kentucky Fried Chicken? Did they get the plans for a new secret military weapon? Did a merger or acquisition plan get publicized, putting the deal at risk? Any of these scenarios could negatively affect our ability to compete. And last, we have reputation. Are we, are we now seen as less reputable such that we lose market share or experience a drop in stock price? How about if lending terms are affected, making it harder to raise capital? But reputational harm isn't easy to estimate, which is why it's best not done by a security person, but rather by a business leader. Analyzing loss magnitude will likely involve many of your business leaders, those whose departments own the asset in question, those who work with any insurance policies, public relations, legal. All of these groups have a part in estimating loss magnitude. Sure, for cyber attacks, you can start with numbers from Ponemon's cost of data breach report, or Verizon's, Verizon's data breach investigation report, or Scientia's library of studies. They can get you started, but they won't be as applicable as the data you can get from your own business. All right. There's a lot more that can be discussed about loss magnitude, but this should get you started. Focus on the six forms of loss. Identify the right stakeholders to speak with. If they have skin in the game, your representation of risk will be on a much more solid foundation. And if you're worried about how accurately they'll represent potential loss magnitude, you can address that with calibration, which just so happens to be the topic of the next video. See you there.